Welcome to Grace Bible Church. We're going to be reading God's Word together in a few minutes, and we'd love for you to have a copy of your own. So if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand and we'll have some men to give you some. And if you don't have a Bible of your own, please keep this one. On a hill outside Jerusalem, 2,000 years ago, the creator of the world died. The sinless son of God accomplished the mission for which he took on flesh. Before the world was made, God decided that he would bestow remarkable love and privilege upon some people whom he would make, those he would save by grace through faith. And even though every single one of us humans, every person he had made, had rebelled against him, every single one of the people that he made rejected him and had earned only judgment and wrath. He predestined that he would adopt some of those rebels as sons and daughters so that for the infinite ages of eternity that are yet to come, he might show us the immeasurable riches of God's love and grace in Christ Jesus. But God is righteous. His perfect holy justice demands that he treat sinners as we deserve. And this means that every person, me especially, but you too, has earned our place in hell, that very real place of unending, everlasting, conscious torment, the outer darkness full of weeping and gnashing of teeth that Jesus described, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. God couldn't ignore sin. He did not pass over it without paying for that penalty, the penalty that the sin deserves. So God, the Son of God, became a man in Christ Jesus. And because he was God in the flesh, he was the only sinless person to ever live. He gave himself to die. He gave himself to die of the physical torture and agony nailed to the cross. But there on the cross, there was worse suffering, far worse he had the sins of all who believe placed on him. And in a few hours, he suffered God's wrath that should have been poured out on me for eternity. Second Corinthians 5.21 succinctly and clearly says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This great trade is for everyone who turns away from their sins and repentance and to God in obedient faith. You cannot earn God's favor through obedience or religion. You can't do enough good works to undo your bad. We can only escape God's wrath by believing in Jesus and trusting in his death, his sufficient death on our behalf. And the night before Jesus accomplished this, he told, us what to, he told us to do what we are about to do. He took a piece of bread, symbolizing his body. And he took a cup of juice, symbolizing his blood. And he told us that we should eat and drink these symbols in remembrance of him. He told us that as often as we do it, we will proclaim his death until he returns. And you and I are prone to forget what really matters. We need to remind each other of this good news of God's love and Jesus' reconciling death. We need to remember Jesus. And that's what we're about to do now. We're going to pass out little cups of juice. And if you're a Christian, when that comes, please take it. This is for everyone who has believed in Jesus. Every Christian here, even if you're just visiting with us, let's remember our Savior by eating and drinking. And if you're not a Christian, if you don't believe in him or you don't trust in him, in him alone for salvation, 
If you refuse to turn from your sins to God, if you don't know what this is all about, please let the bread and juice pass when it comes. But don't leave here today without talking to me or someone about how you can be saved. We're going to read from Matthew 27, 27. You can open your Bibles and read along. Or perhaps just close your eyes and listen, Christian. So that you can see with your mind's eye in the words of scripture, what we're going to remember in the eating and drinking. And when I'm done, the bread and juice will be passed out. Take it and hold it. And we're going to eat and drink together. While you hold it, while you hold the bread and juice, give thanks Evaluate ways in which you're living inconsistent with this new life in Christ that was purchased at such a high cost. Are there any unconfessed sins you need to repent of? Do it. And let's remember Jesus together and proclaim his death. Then, when the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, they gathered the whole Roman cohort around him and they stripped him and put scarlet robe on him. And after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt down before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat on him and took the reed and began to beat him on the head. When they mocked him, they, put the scarlet, they took the scarlet robe off him and put his own garments back on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they were coming out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon, whom they pressed into service to bear his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave him wine mixed with gall. And after tasting it, he did not want to drink. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves by casting lots. And sitting down, they began to keep watch over him there. And above his head, they put up the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And at that time, two robbers were crucified with him. One on the right, one on the left. And those passing by were blaspheming him, shaking their head and saying, you who are going to destroy the sanctuary and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you're the son of God, come down from the cross. And in the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying he saved others, he, can't save, can, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross and we'll believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he delights in him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. Now, from the sixth hour, Darkness fell upon all the land until the ninth hour. In about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who were standing there when they heard it began saying, this man's calling for Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and taking a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him a, and gave him a drink. But the rest of them were saying, let's see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. <clears throat> 